Hello everyone, my name is David Fernandez, Alpha Alpha One Delta Foxtrot. Today is February 13th, 2021. Uh, I'm setting up my portable go kit for the Dade Radio Club of Miami Simplex drill that we're having today. Uh, we're setting up field stations throughout the city and uh, we're going to be trying to see how far we can talk between these stations. So I figured it was a good opportunity to introduce my new go kit that I just built about two weeks ago and uh, show off the details on it, how I built it, the parts I used, and uh, hopefully inspire others to build a go kit. Or if you're thinking about building a go kit, getting some ideas of how you want to set it up and the parts that you want to use. One thing I will note about this go kit build is this is my second go kit. I had a prior go kit that in consisted of a Plano orange waterproof box uh, that was more of a battery pack with storage inside for my dual band radio, antenna cables, and a few other accessories. Uh, over time, my go kit has grown. I've added HF capabilities. I've added more components to it. With the old go kit, my radios, when they were being used, were just sitting on the table with a rat's nest of cables going down to the battery pack. Uh, it was really unprotected. With the new go kit, my goal was to build something that was all in one, one box. I could just pick up that one box, take it and use it, and everything was permanently installed and protected. Uh, I didn't have so many failure points with wiring and connectors and everything like that. Uh, so this is the current iteration, what I've built with my Go Kit. It is modular depending on what activity I'm doing and how long I'm planning to be there for. Okay, so for the first part of the presentation, I want to go through the different pieces. Uh, as I mentioned, I set this up to be modular depending what I'm going to do. So the primary Go Kit is this box right here. This has everything I need in order to get on the air from an event. Uh, if it's an event that has good local coverage repeater, I don't need an external antenna, I don't need anything. Uh, and we'll go through the details of what's in each one of these setups later once I get everything set up. Uh, but this has all my radios, it has a built-in battery, uh, I have a portable antenna that I deploy with it, so this is my one and all box to get me on the air. If I'm going to be set up somewhere where repeater coverage isn't that great, or I want to use simplex, I need further range, then I bring out my portable antenna. And this consists of a Diamond X50 clone for the antenna, a DJ lighting tripod that I use as the base, and then a collapsible mast, a composite masked. And I don't know who makes this. I actually picked this up at the Orlando Ham Fest a few years ago, but it's a nice tall mast, sits on top of my tripod with the antenna on top of it. All of the guy wires, antenna wires, and everything I need in order to get the antenna set up are packed away in the main go box. So I have those with me at all times. And then I have a set of small cones that I set up around the tower at the guy wires just to keep people from tripping over them. The second part of my kit is the solar panels. I have two 48 watt solar panels. They're rated to produce six amps of current at full sun. Uh, so if it's there's a situation where I want to keep the battery recharged, uh, it's gonna be a little bit longer deployment then I'll take these and with six amps of current, they do more than enough to keep the battery topped off even with moderate use. Uh, the next piece is my HF kit. In this bag, I carry everything I need in order to operate HF. Uh, I have an off-center fed dipole, uh, my antenna tuner, uh, assorted cables, uh, and other items that I need uh, in order to get on the air with HF. So if this is just a public service event or some kind of localized emergency, I don't have to carry this. I have everything I need to operate VHF, UHF in the main kit. But for HF deployments, then I carry this bag. The final piece is my external battery pack. As I mentioned, the kit has 24 amp hours uh, worth of battery in it already. 
uh, but for longer deployments like field day or a multi-day event, uh, long overnight events where I don't have solar to recharge, then I have an external battery pack with an additional 48 amp hours of battery that I can use to extend my capabilities with the kit. So let me get everything set up and then we can talk in detail about what's in each one of the kits and how they actually work. All right, so the first thing we'll go through is the main go kit itself. Uh, the main go kit is built out of a Gator GRB 4U soft sided rack bag. Uh, this is a ballistic nylon soft sided bag with a plywood internal shell uh, to keep its form. Uh, the nice thing about this rack bag is it has a lot of carry options, it has the handle so you can carry it like a suitcase. It comes with a shoulder strap, but I don't use it because it's way too heavy to hang on your shoulder. We'll talk about that a little more later. Has a nice pocket on top where I keep coax, uh, the guy wires for the antenna, all kinds of connectors, uh, assorted items that I could need during a deployment. Uh, and then on the front, it has this these bungee cords. And here I keep a little notepad with paper, pen, and stuff like that while I'm operating. So let's open up the bag and get into what's actually in the bag. Uh, so my goal when building this again was to make something, everything that I need is included, but I also wanted to make it easy to work on. Uh, so the front cover that I got for it, it's a 4U blank plate. But the nice thing about this blank plate is it is hinged. So I can very easily unlock it here, swing it open, and I have access to everything inside the Go Kit. All right, so as we start through everything here on the Go Kit, the first radio on the top left is a Kenwood TMV7 VHF UHF dual bander. I've had this radio for a really long time. Uh, these radios, unfortunately, the old TMV7s are infamous for the blue display dimming out and uh, the LCD, the ribbon cable goes out on it. Uh, I've been lucky with this one, the ribbon cable is still good, and I actually changed out the LED lighting from, from blue to white. Uh, it doesn't have the greatest visibility during the day, uh, so that's one thing. If you have an option to use another radio, uh, you might wanna consider something with a traditional LCD that is more visible during the day. Uh, the next radio over is my HF radio. It's my Yezu FT891. It's a great little compact radio, full power, 100 watt uh, HF, uh, which works out beautifully here in the Go Kit. Uh, below that, I have a temperature gauge, uh, and the sensor for that is mounted to the actual radios. So as I operate the radios, I can monitor the temperature. Uh, near the heat sinks to make sure the radios aren't running too hot. Uh, below that, down here, I have connections. I've put uh, a switch. Uh, in the case, I have a built-in speaker. Uh, I decided to go with just a single speaker because uh, there's not too many scenarios where I'd be trying to listen to both radios uh, at the same time. So I have a switch where I can switch back and forth. And the way this is set up, uh, when it's to the left, the primary, the VHF radio goes to the speaker. The HF is routed to the headphone jack. When I move it to the right, the HF radio is mounted to the speaker and the VHF UHF is mounted to the headphone jack. So we have the ability to do two operators, one on the speaker, one on headphones uh, and go back and forth. Uh, over here uh, next to my call sign, I have a USB port which goes to the FT891. That allows me to use my laptop with Ham Radio Deluxe or logging software or uh, any kind of software I wanna use. Uh, if I wanna do uh, data, FT8 or something like that. Uh, 
that I can use with the uh, with the the uh, HF radio. Uh, below that, I have some USB ports to charge devices. I have a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug, which I use for multiple things. If I need to connect something there, I also have a 12 volt power supply for my laptop that I plug in there and I run my power supply off this uh, internal power. I don't need to worry about having electricity to run the laptop. Uh, next to that, I have my solar charge controller. We spoke about the solar panels before. So this is what allows the solar panels to recharge the internal batteries and the external battery when connected. Uh, below that, I have some circuit breakers for the different uh, devices, the, the plugs, the cigarette lighters, and stuff like that. The radios are actually fused inside the case. Uh, because these circuit breakers are only 15 amps and the uh, radios require a little bit more than that. Uh, as we move to this side of the case, uh, the first thing is a speaker. This is a Maycom speaker uh, that I had laying around that I built into the case here. Uh, underneath it, I have the two microphone jacks for the radios. Uh, these are connected in the back to the actual jacks in the radios. I have my connection here for external battery where I connect my external battery pack. Uh, so I have power cable that comes up from the external battery we spoke about earlier and plugs in right here. And now the external battery is linked in with the internal battery for all this. Uh, next to that, I have a few more Anderson power pole connectors. Uh, this is the input from the solar panels that comes into here. Once I plug this in, you'll see that now the solar controller is indicating that it is charging from the solar panels. Uh, I also have an external charge connector here where if I wanna put a trickle charger or something on this battery to keep it charged, I can. Uh, and then underneath that, I have two sets of Anderson power poles with outputs. These are going through the circuit breakers. So if somebody has an external radio or I have another external radio that I wanna run off here, I can plug it into there. So here, this is the main power switch that cuts power to the entire uh, system. When this switch is off, there is no load on the battery. I don't have to worry about the kit being discharged or anything in transport or anything like that. This is a protected switch with a cover because I wanted to make sure that it didn't accidentally get turned on uh, when in transport. So in order to turn it on, you lift the cover and then you flip the switch and everything comes on. Uh, above that, I have an RJ45 port, which is the connection for my MFJ external tuner. This is connected to the HF radio. So I just take my cable, it's a regular Ethernet cable from the MFJ tuner and plug it into here. And now the, F, the uh, automatic tuner comes up. And above that, I have the two connectors, uh, the one for the HF antenna and the one for the VHF U antenna. UHF antenna which is connected to here and then I also have the option I mentioned I had an internal antenna here so I have a Comet B10 antenna that I can screw directly onto here with a right angle PL259 connector and now with this antenna here uh, I can now transmit on the local repeaters uh, and if you know if I'm using a, doing a local event or something where uh, repeater coverage is good. I don't even need to set up the external antenna. Uh, I've tested the standing waves on this and they are at 1.5 all across UHF, VHF, so it, it works out really well. Again, you know, it's a small, tiny antenna, so coverage is not that great, but it's good for when there's good repeater coverage. All right, the last thing on the front of the case is I did install some LED strip lights for using at night. So if I'm somewhere dark at night, I can flip these on and it illuminates the front of the go kit. It also illuminates this area here. Uh, and there are blue lights so it doesn't mess with your night vision. Uh, it, it works out pretty well. Uh, I also have that I carry a little USB uh, gooseneck white light that I can plug into the USB port and illuminate my writing pad or if I'm working on something here. Uh, finally, I put a couple little magnets up here at the top of the case and on the back of the microphone so that when the microphones are not in use, I can just hang them there on the magnets. Now, one of the things I mentioned that I liked about this case is the fact that you can swing open 
the front of the case. And let me show you that now. So I'm going to take off the uh, Comet SB10 antenna for now. And this rack cover that I purchased has a quick latch here that you open and the whole front of the case swings open. Now this gives me access to the inside of the case. I've got all of my wiring here. You can see the back side of the speaker and you can see the inside of the case. So inside the case, I have a Duracom 15 amp power supply. Uh, I have the main radio body for the FT891. And above that, I have the main radio body for the TMV7. On this side, I have my 24 amp hour battery. And then I have a Numar power switcher, which allows you to automatically switch between power supply and battery. And when the power supply is plugged in, the, the power supply will recharge the battery. Now, I spoke to this before. Uh, I'll comment on it again. When I built this Go Kit, I tried to recycle as much as I could from my old Go Kit and from parts that I had in stock already. I had a big pile of spare parts and stuff from over the years. Uh, so I wanted to reuse as much of that as possible. That came at an advantage for cost savings, but it came at a cost when it comes to weight and size. For example, the battery that I'm using is a sealed lead acid 24 amp hour battery. The battery alone weighs 25 pounds. Uh, there's newer chemistry, newer technology batteries out there, BioEno, all kinds of, uh, of new types of lithium batteries and stuff that weigh a fraction of that. Uh, likewise, the power supply, the power switcher, and the solar controller. This is one of those generic uh, Amazon pulse wave modulation solar controllers. Uh, this is pretty much old technology at this point. There's new products like the West Mountain Radio Epic Power Gate, which does the same thing as the power switcher and the solar controller and is in a much, much smaller package that takes much less space and doesn't weigh nearly as much. Uh, but these are conscious decisions I made. I wanted to recycle what I had instead of spending a bunch of money, you know, purchasing items I, I already owned. Uh, but again, this gives me access to everything here. Uh, the last thing is I do have a little switch here, which turns on some white lights inside the case uh, so that when I'm working on stuff inside there, if I'm having an issue at night or whatever, I have white illumination inside the case that I can see what's going on. All right, so one item of note, the Duracom power supply I have is a 15 amp power supply that is more than sufficient for the dual band VHF mobile, VHF UHF, and uh, for everything else in the kit, but it is a little underpowered for the Yezu FT891. The FT891 calls for a 22 amp power supply uh, that's at R using RTTY at full power or some kind of continuous duty uh, high power transmission. I normally don't do data or RTTY from my Go kit. Uh, I normally use SSB voice, so I normally don't consume that much. Uh, but if ever I needed to, I always have the option of scaling back the power, the transmit power on the radio to consume a little bit less. Uh, that's a decision I made because that was a small power supply that I had on hand. And I wanted to go ahead and, again, recycle as much as I could from what I had rather than trying to spend a lot of money on new stuff. This is the back of the Gator case. It's also a zippered cover. And if you open that up, you'll see I've Velcroed to the back of it uh, an extension cord. Uh, since this is a small 15 amp power supply, I just have a, a simple lamp cord extension cord that's compact, easy to store here. I have access to the connections and stuff on the back of the radio and power supply. Uh, and I also store my mallet here that I use to uh, put in the stakes for the antenna. Also, if I see that my temperature is running a little hot, I can open this up and this provides a lot of ventilation for the back of the radio. The last thing I did to the Gator case was I attached some 
feet to the bottom of it. Uh, the two front feet are two inch tall. The back ones are one inch tall. And those work nicely to lay it on the table. Uh, puts it up at a good angle for operating. And also if there's any kind of wetness or spill or anything on the table, it keeps the kit up out of that water in case of emergency. These are the solar panels that have been set up. Uh, they attach together via magnets. Uh, and then I made some PVC little standoff uh, legs for them to angle it towards the south, which is the direction where the sun comes from here. Uh, everything connects together with Amphenol connectors and they have their cable to plug it into the box to recharge the batteries. This is the antenna uh, set up. Uh, as we mentioned before, the bottom part is a DJ lighting tripod. Uh, above that, I have the telescopic mast with the X50 antenna uh, up above. Uh, I also have, right now, I'm running a frequency devices off-center fed uh, dipole for HF. Uh, the dipole is connected to a rope with a pulley, so I can easily raise it up the mast, uh, and then everything is guide down. And uh, it takes me about 15 minutes to get set up, and I can set it up by myself. Uh, one item of note, I am currently set up in my backyard, so my actual dipole from my base station is draped across here. That's the cable that you see horizontally there. Uh, that is not a power line. That is my dipole antenna, which is not in use right now. So now that everything's set up and I've given you a quick description of everything, let's go ahead and get on the air for this simplex drill and see who we can make contact with. Alpha Alpha 1, Delta Foxtrot on frequency. I had a copy on Yankee Delta. All right, so I'm actually set up in my backyard uh, near Southwest 56th Street and 102 Avenue. Uh, radio is a Kenwood TMV7, part of my go kit, running off battery power with solar backup. Uh, for an antenna, I'm using a Comet X50 clone uh, that's up at about 30 feet on a tripod and mast in the middle of my backyard. And I'm copying you loud and clear. I copied somebody who called out. They heard me in Homestead. And I'm calling, and I'm also copying the YD station that was there a few minutes ago. Beautiful. And what's your uh, I want to say this radio is about 40 watts. I'd have to Google it. Beautiful. Judging that, I'm probably only about five minutes away from you. Uh, All right, likewise, you're almost full quieting here, just a tiny bit of picket fencing, but great signal, loud and clear. Uh, I can hear you perfectly here. Uh, great, thank you very much for the report. All right, so that's pretty much it. We had a successful setup, made a few successful contacts uh, with the field station, so I'm very happy with the way it's come out. I'm looking forward to getting lots of use out of it and uh, it should serve my needs for quite a long bit. So uh, thanks for staying with me here, listening to the presentation. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, and uh, I'll be happy to answer them.